you've talked about learning the counselor role, and I'm curious to find out uh, how sh how do you learn the ethics that you need to practice? Well, it's, it's a favorite topic of mine, <laughs> but it doesn't start with ethics. It starts with values, and um, I think uh, the problem with ethics is that. Uh, they don't make dishonest people honest. They don't make, um, you know, uninformed people suddenly very wise to the world. Um, ethics uh, codes are very important. Uh, where they're most important would be in helping people decide uh, on how to approach or handle an issue in our field uh, where there might be more than one right answer. Uh, I, I think that's that's admittedly a very, a very short summary of ethics, but that's kind of where I view that. I think what's more important in our field is um, the statement of values, of what we believe is important based on our understanding of who we are and what we do. And I have, through the Arthur Page Society and other organizations, um, have been working to try to develop some kind of a basic value statement for uh, practitioners, um, public relations, public affairs. Um, we haven't decided on what we're going to call ourselves yet. Maybe we can talk about that a little bit later. But I think that our value proposition is essentially rooted in um, the acknowledgement of the importance of four main constituents. Um, one would be the publics. The first would be the publics with whom we communicate. And I think that the truth, uh, well communicated, um, and, and the commitment to the truth and communicating it well, not just part of the truth, but the whole truth, or at least enough truth to help an audience fully understand a situation, ought to be a very important value to us. Transparency might be included in that one tenet. Um, and many others, but I almost think uh, we need to consider a vow related to the truth. And not just the truth that someone else tells us, but truth that we have validated based on our own research. Um, I think that's a, an important part of really who we are and what we value. A second tenet would be to the client's or the, the organizations or individuals we serve. And we value honest advocacy for their points of view, um, their decisions about who they are, what's important to them. And we need to be honest advocates, but we need to do that in a way that we maintain our own independence so that we can validate claims being made by our clients and speak to those truths. Um, there's a lot more to be said about that, but I, I view that as a very important constituent and value tenant, if you will, of um, public relations. The third tenant would be the media. Um, and I'm talking about new media, old media, but it essentially arises from the constitutional right that we have to inquire about matters that are in the public interest. And that's traditionally the role of the journalist. Today, it's a much broader definition when you bring in bloggers. And um, I think that the challenge for communications people uh, is to discern, and here's where you get to the ethics question, what are legitimate inquiries? And I think um, uh, that doesn't mean just the New York Times or just the Wall Street Journal, but I think discovering that a particular blogger had um, a, an important audience and had uh, a sense of, it, of his or her own values, that to me represents a legitimate um, inquiry into uh, what we might be doing. So I would include that in the, in the media. And I think we have an obligation to be responsive to inquiries from the media, and uh, to do so promptly, certainly truthfully, advocate, um, uh, uh, accurately, I think that um, we have a 
we, pl we place a value on upholding the highest journalistic standards. That, after all, is the third leg of the old definition of public relations, is the third party that um, is working with information that we are dispensing. And then I think the fourth value tenant is to our own uh, profession and the uh, standards that um, we adopt, the principles that we uphold that make up the character of who we are. And there needs to be some kind of uniformity in that commitment so that we can expect um, of each other uh, the same kind of treatment of uh, information, delivery of information, and, and uh, all of that being essentially uh, rooted in the truth. Not essentially, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely rooted in the truth. Um, I think that that, this is a longer answer than you were probably prepared for, but unless we come together um, on some agreement of what we value on a personal level uh, in our profession, uh, then um, an ethics, I mean, if we just focus on the ethics of it, anyone could sign on to an ethics code. But it seems to me it has a whole lot more meaning if um, that commitment is based on what we agree to be the fundamental values of who we are and what we do. Are you willing, can I ask a general question about the page principles and what you talk some about? Take it wherever you want to take it for the interview. You've talked about values and um, of course Arthur Page comes to mind uh, when we think about the page principles and the way those can be really read and understood as values. And I'm wondering if, if you'll talk about the page principles and their, their value to the profession. Well, I think the page principles um, have come to represent um, a real definition of how we intend to practice. They're not really a definition of uh, the technical aspects of, of communications. There's nothing in there about how to write a press release or the quality of the annual report you want to be putting out or the, the, the cancel. But what they reflect is Arthur Page's uh, true understanding of his role in um, the Bell system and um, the influence that he wanted to have over decision making. And I think that as um, Jack Coton and others reviewed the work of, uh, of, of Arthur Page, uh, they knew that these principles were important and that um, it would be um, very important for future generations to try to codify this, and, and that's what they've done. Telling the truth, um, you know, that too often in my book we get down to these one-liners, tell the truth, prove it with action, you know, recognize blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but once in a while you need to go back and read the whole statement about what do we mean about telling the truth and what do we mean about you know proving it with 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 action um, proving it with action is probably one of the most important principles for me and it it was an issue that I focused on um, in my career and that had to do with the behavior of um, an organization um, and making sure that that behavior was consistent always with the values that it publicly said were important to it. You know, the worst thing you can do and lose your integrity totally is to say that you believe in one thing and create a perception that you're, you're acting in some other way or in self-interest and away from that. So uh, telling the truth, proving it with action, that is, behaviors, decision-making on tough issues in any business that is consistent with what you've said is important to your organization, that's the, that's the crux of it. I mean, you know, it, 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 from there it's about how do you articulate that, how do you write that, how do you place it, how do you get it, you know, all, those are all things that we can, we, you know, good education programs will teach people to do in our field but understanding the importance of that function 
uh, as a part of what we do and is very important in the first place. And then secondly, how you execute that in, within your organization is another dimension of that. And the whole issue with that, I believe, comes down to our own, well, certainly our experience, our good judgment, born on years of experience, but also self-confidence in um, what we know to be true and what we know to be right about a situation and to be able to stand our ground, not to back down when you get into an argument with somebody who may see it a little differently, but to have the self-confidence to be there and necessary to put your career on the line uh, to, uh, to prevail on your, on your point of view. So that, that second principle in there holds um, a ton of stuff for me in terms of defining who we are, the importance of what we do, the philosophical end up underpinnings of uh, what we do. We don't show up in a management meeting with um, the decisions of old judges or court cases, which general counsel can support. We don't have the accounting practices and standards board, which the chief financial officer is going to bring. We don't have um, all the employment laws and practices that the HR person is going to show up with. Um, we don't have the FDA's requirements. Sometimes we do, but there are people in management who represent those points of view. We don't have any studied hierarchical academic uh, positioning and, you know, and, and so how do you make that dog hunt, someone would say. Well, you know, it's the strength of your convictions about who you are and the relationships you've already established with those people who are going to say, you know, I, I don't entirely agree with him, but uh, there's a ring of truth in what he's, in he, in what he's saying. And it, it takes intestinal fortitude and a lot of self-confidence to stand in those positions and to prevail in those arguments. It helps a lot to be able to turn to contemporaries through the Page Society and to know that they're operating against a, 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 a statement or a, you know, a statement of principles that are consistent with what you're advocating. So there's huge value in, in that. Let me speak to one other principle that I think is terribly important, and that's the last one, which is to remain calm, patient, and good-humored. It sounds silly to mention in the face of telling the truth and proving with action and you know, all those other dimensions. But it's really important. And what it says is that um, it's important for us not to take ourselves too seriously all the time, to recognize that in our society, in our free society, in the organizations that we represent, there has to be a balance of views. We need to keep the team together. We need to keep everybody advancing. Um, on the same track and inspired and committed to supporting one another. Um, you can't get there if um, you're just hammering everyone else saying, you know, we're not going to do that because it's not true or it's not the whole truth or, you know, you can take this kind of policing uh, stance in your organization and some people do and policing is a good thing. <laughs> but I think where you really win acceptance and endorsement is if you know this, not taking yourself so seriously and that the world is not going to end tomorrow. Um, that um, you're willing to um, compromise uh, when it's appropriate to compromise. Um, uh, you're, I think that that last principle also speaks to Maintaining a commitment to a principle for a long term, you know, it's, it's hard to do in the short term. Tony Blair um, has suggested that, um, you know, you almost need a short term public policy and then a long term commitment to your, to your values. That you need to be able to live with both dimensions and be okay with that.
and I know a lot of people who have found the peace of that idea that the commitment to prevail in the long term, but to survive in the short term. And that's where the art of our practice comes into play. It truly is. And I think it's a very important kind of understanding that we need to get into, particularly young people who are coming along in this profession.